Hey, what's up? It's Hugo here. Today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 8 on a virtual machine for free on your Mac. Now this only counts for the consumer preview, which is currently free for download. Anybody can download it for free, of course, legally. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that right now and install it on a virtual machine. That, of course, also for free. So all the software we're going to be using uh, is absolutely free. And I'll leave all the links in the description. And do keep in mind, as soon as Windows 8 actually comes out, uh, these links might not be um, active anymore or they you might not be able to download it anymore uh, legally so let's get right into it uh, the first thing you want to do is get all the software you need to uh, start installing this on a virtual machine the first thing you'll need is VirtualBox this is what we're going to use to install or create sorry a virtual machine and on there we will install uh, Windows 8 so VirtualBox is completely free it's an open source uh, project and uh, I'll let you I'll leave this link in the description this is their download page and go ahead and go for the VirtualBox for OS 10 hosts. This is, of course, the latest version. Go ahead and click on this uh, times 86 AMD 64. Uh, and this will start your download. It's a really, really fast download. It's a quite a small program. As you can see, it only takes like nine seconds or something like that. So it's really, really quick. Uh, once you have that, go ahead and simply install it. Uh, you can see it's going to automatically archive it for you and mount it. And uh, simply go through the installation progress. Uh, it's just like any other software to be honest just double click this package and uh, you should have it installed the second thing we'll need of course is Windows 8 itself so this is the Windows 8 consumer preview ISO images uh, by default they give you just a setup file but if you go to this specific link that again I'll leave in the description you can download the ISO image and from here on you can just download any uh, version they have they've got uh, French German Japanese Chinese and English and down here are the system requirements that you might want to keep in mind when setting up your virtual machine. Um, so, yep, you can go ahead and choose for the 64-bit or the 32-bit. Do keep in mind that the 64-bit is about uh, a little less than 1 gig uh, larger in file size than the 32-bit version. So, you know, if you have a slow connection, you might want to do that. I went ahead and downloaded the 64-bit, but don't worry, the installation is exactly the same with uh, both versions. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you exactly what settings to change depending on what version you download it. It took me about nine minutes to download. It's actually a really fast download uh, through the Microsoft servers. Uh, you don't need to torrent or anything. It's really fast download. It's about uh, 5.5 megabytes per second uh, constant speed. So it's really, really good uh, uh, download speed for you guys that have fast connections. Once you finish downloading it, you should have your file here called Windows 8 Consumer Preview 64-bit English in my case. Uh, of course, you might have download this 32-bit version. Go ahead and launch up VirtualBox once you have all the stuff you need. Now, once you're inside VirtualBox, it's a pretty simple program to set up a virtual machine, although it's still pretty powerful. Simply click on New to create a new virtual machine, and uh, you'll be brought to a wizard. Now, here you can just name your um, virtual machine, whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Windows 8. Uh, there you go. And uh, you'll notice that as soon as you name it, Windows 8 is going to recognize it and going to say, oh, maybe it wants to install Windows 8. So he's automatically going to put this to Windows 8 but if it doesn't you can just select it manually so Windows Microsoft Windows and then 60 uh, Windows 8 if you have a 32-bit version go ahead and simply click on Windows 8 and if you have the 64-bit version click on Windows 8 and then 64-bit of course so depending on what you download it so um, I'm pretty sure at least in my opinion I've noticed that most of the time 32-bit versions work better on virtual machines but I just wanted to try out the 64-bit version see how it runs and uh, you know at least I can tell you at the end of the video if it's worth it or not simply go ahead and uh, click on continue here you can choose the amount of RAM you give to your machine now again you can go ahead and look at the uh, minimum requirements here if you want to be sure that you have enough but you only need one gigabyte of RAM uh, and two gigabytes of RAM if you have the 64-bit version so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, 4 gigs here. I have 16 gigs in total, so, you know, 4 gigs is uh, fine. Uh, here, just leave this as it is. Create a new disk, a startup disk. And here, you can just leave that as a VDI, except if you have another preference. But uh, I'll just leave it at this. And uh, just keep in mind, the VDI format only works with uh, VirtualBox and not with any other program. So, uh, you know, but we're not going to use any other program. Here, you can choose dynamically allocated or fixed size. Uh, if you do fixed size, it's literally going to take a chunk out of your hard drive. I think it's 20 gigabytes by default. So it's just going to take away 20 gigabytes and it's going to give that fixed size to uh, that virtual machine. If you do dynamically allocate it, it's only uh, going to take the amount of memory that it actually needs. Go ahead and click on continue. I personally 
shows for dynamically allocated. And as you can see here, you can choose the location exactly where it's going to save the virtual machine and whatnot. And you can choose how much um, space you want to give it. I can give it up to two terabytes. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, the 20 gigabytes, um, which is a pretty good size in my opinion. Go ahead and click on continue. And then you have a little summary of all your settings that you've just chosen. Uh, go ahead and click on create and create. And there you go. It started creating your virtual machine. And it just created your virtual machine. We didn't actually install Windows 8 on it yet, but it's really simple. Just select it here in the menu and click on start. This is going to start off your uh, Windows 8 virtual machine. Click on OK. This is the first run wizard. This is where we're going to choose uh, the ISO file of the Windows 8 uh, consumer preview that we've just downloaded. So here where it says select installation media, Go ahead and click on the little folder on the right here of the drop down menu. Go ahead and select uh, the file, the Windows 8 developer preview file that we got here, this one. As you can see, this is the one we've just downloaded here. I'm going to go ahead and click on open. And as you can see, it's going to install from this media here. So click on continue once you have selected it and click on start. It's going to start the whole Windows 8 installation process. It's a fairly easy process. Um, you'll see it will just take you to uh, kind of a standard installation of Windows. Uh, so you can go ahead and choose the language and all that stuff. So this is the keyboard settings I'm using. And then you can go ahead and simply click on install now. Now the first thing you'll be asked right away at the beginning of your installation is the product key to activate Windows. Now again, this is a consumer preview, so it's totally free to use and legal. Uh, so you don't need to, any, uh, to go and find any obscure serial numbers to activate your Windows. Uh, you can just go on the official Windows website under the frequently asked question and uh, if it asks you for uh, a serial key or a product key, you can just use uh, the one they give you. Now I won't leave a link to this, this um, page, but I will leave this exact uh, product key in the description so you can use it since it's completely legal to use. Unfortunately, you cannot copy paste from your Mac to the, win uh, to the virtual machine, so you will have to type it in every single number or letter uh, individually. So. So once you've typed in the product key, simply go ahead and click on next. This will start the whole installation progress now. It might take a while, go ahead and accept these uh, license terms. And here you can choose to uh, upgrade, which is pretty much install Windows and keep the files and apps and all that stuff and custom install. So that what we, that's what we're gonna do, just custom install. Choose the drive, this is a virtual drive again, this is the 20 uh, gigabyte drive we, uh, we decided to use or we created while creating the virtual machine. And uh, select that one and click on next. And here it's where it's really going to install Windows 8 itself. This, this might take a while, especially when you're going to install features, installing updates and all that stuff. But uh, this should take about uh, 30 minutes uh, in my experience personally. The 32-bit version might install a little faster, uh, but this does take quite a while, so have a little patience. So once it finished installing Windows 8, it actually only took me, uh, I said 30 minutes uh, before, but uh, now that I actually installed it, the, the 64-bit version took me 11 minutes to install, so it was fairly quick. Uh, and as soon as it's done installing, it's going to restart the virtual machine by itself. It does that automatically, so you don't need to worry about that. And once it's restarted, you'll be able to start creating your account for your computer and uh, actually start using Windows 8. So that's pretty cool. So here we are, that took a little less than a year. Um, it's gonna restart once again, and then you'll finally be actually able to use Windows 8. So that took quite a while actually, um, but uh, just enough for me to play some uh, Xbox, that was fine. It's gonna go pretty quickly now. Uh, now one thing to point out though, if you've chosen fixed size when creating your virtual machine, uh, it actually takes longer to create the virtual machine, but most of the time it does advantage you uh, while using Windows 8 because it's going to be able to write files faster uh, most of the time. And uh, probably the installation progress process sorry, goes even faster if you've chosen to uh, choose the fixed size where it literally takes a chunk out of your hard drive. Um, so once again, it's preparing. I don't know what for, but uh, it's working out. There we go. Let's go through some a few basics here. You can choose uh, first off the background color, which is ugh, ugly. So I'm gonna go for uh, oof. I mean, this is not such a nice green, but 
we'll go for green. Uh, let's go to a PC name. We'll call it a MacBook, like a box. And uh, here you can choose your uh, keyboard in case you uh, missed that. Uh, in case your keyboard is not working properly, here you can uh, customize your settings or use Express settings, and you can see exactly what the Express settings are here. Uh, this just installs all the important stuff and stuff like that. Uh, we're just gonna go for with Express settings. You can do customize your settings if you prefer, uh, but uh, you know, um, here you can uh, set up your email address if you want to log into your PC uh, with a Microsoft account. So uh, I'm just gonna use no email address and use local account here. And the user is gonna be Hugo1234. You know my password. Password a hint. Mm. I think this is gonna be my hint. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Five, six, seven, eight finish and from here on it should be pretty fast I mean it already installed Windows 8 completely for you uh, it should be just in going through a few settings quite basic and once that's done you'll be able to simply use a uh, Windows 8 now Windows 8 has a whole new starting user interface has this whole Metro style kind of slideshow or three that well it's not really three-dimensional but uh, you know I'll see uh, what I mean in a second it's a uh, very inspired from a Windows 7 phone, of course also by Microsoft, and uh, these little colorful tiles. Looks pretty good. I don't know if it's actually that productive, but uh, we'll see how that goes once Windows 8 actually uh, comes out and, you know, we get some good reviews from it. Yep. There we go, we're on the start screen. As you can see, as I already mentioned before, uh, the startup screen. So it seems to run fairly smoothly even in 64-bit even though I think 32-bit runs even uh, smoother actually um, and as you can see we have to change the resolution here because this is the default low resolution and you can use just use the up and down scroll of your mouse to actually go left and right doesn't really make sense but it does work uh, very well and uh, one thing I personally really like of this new Windows 8 is the whole Xbox integration which is really really cool you got an Xbox companion which is especially cool if you have a tablet because now Windows 8 is fully compatible with tablets now this is an app preview but you'll you're able to uh, use your or, or control your Xbox with a tablet now you're not actually able to see what's happening on your console but you're able to use it as a, a bit a big remote uh, pretty much so you'll able to press a b x y and uh, and stuff like that and swipe and you'll be able to connect to uh, to the uh, xbox 360 so it gives you really uh you know straightforward instructions if you want to do that if you want to go back to the start, start screen by the way uh, you go to the lower uh, left corner here and uh, you can go ahead and go back to the start screen so there's a few things to learn every corner actually ha is a hot corner so if you go to the top left here you have all the windows that are open in desktop mode and if you go to the top um, right you have a few uh, options here search share start uh, devices and settings now in these settings here you can go to more PC settings and this will really pop the whole PC settings panel uh, which is pretty cool where you can customize quite a few things again you can personalize uh, your lock screen and stuff choose a uh, you know the login screen the start screen what kind of patterns you want and stuff hopefully this is more customizable later where you can actually choose your own pictures and stuff because I'm sure some cool designers can do cool stuff with that uh, you know but you cannot actually change the resolution in here at least not that I know of uh, so to change the screen resolution you go back to the start screen go on desktop by the way you can move these tiles around in case you didn't know just click and hold and drag them but uh, go on your desktop and uh, once you're on your desktop this is kind of the Windows 7 what you're used to have from Windows 7 simply uh, right click on the desktop and choose screen resolution uh, so that hasn't really changed from Windows 7. If you're used to that, you can uh, it's the same way. And I'm just going to put it to the highest. It doesn't recognize your screen by default if you're running it on the virtual machine, unfortunately. Uh, so it won't let you um, put it on the widescreen resolutions for some reason. But uh, it might be actually possible with some tweaking somewhere in the virtual machine settings uh, and not in Windows 8. But uh, that's pretty much all I need, wanted to show you guys how to change the screen resolution. The rest you can just discover by yourself. But it has some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool stuff here. Uh, once, by the way, you've changed your screen resolution, as you can see, it does show up way more here in the uh, the main startup menu, and you can add 
apps to this and whatnot. Um, I haven't actually found out how to shut down the computer. It's probably really, really simple. I probably just don't know it. Uh, but since this is really based around um, tablets, I'm sure there's a button on the actual tablet to put it off. But the only way I figured out uh, right now is simply to first sign out and then to uh, put it off from the lock screen. But you know, by the way, if you shut down your machine and come back on it, it will actually log you in on this screen. It will not log you in automatically properly. And you might be, huh, where do I have to go to log in? I don't know what, um, I don't know how to get to my screen. All I need to do is drag this to the top. So it's, you can really see it's, it's made for tablets, uh, but that's pretty much how you log in and you can shut down your computer here. So that's how I, how I shut down my computer. I'm sure there's an easier way. But anyway, I'll thank you a lot for watching this video on how to install Windows 8 on the virtual machine on your Mac for free. I thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out my two latest videos down here. Follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, and circle me on Google+. Plus. If you like to do the social stuff and follow me on there, make sure to uh, not miss any of my videos because I always post them on social media. So, you know, you might want to check that out. I thank you all for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace.